Hello, and welcome to Women in Business, where we interview entrepreneurs and senior managers and show you the strengths, successes, obstacles, and roadblocks women experience in business. Since I believe every person in business needs to be visible, I'd like to invite you to watch www.sob6, that's the number six, tips.com, which will give you some valuable information should you get the call to be on radio or TV, which I think is extremely important. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at Gail Carson, that's G-A-Y-L-E, Gail Carson 13 at gmail.com, or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com, and sign up for my weekly newsletter. My guest today is Wanda Toro Torini, also known as Dr. Wanda or the Nerdy Girl Entrepreneur. entrepreneur. She's quite a seasoned entrepreneur, but even more unique, she's a natural inventor. Her latest brainchild, catchwords.com, helps fellow entrepreneurs unveil their anonymous fans and stop leaving money on the table. She's a unique combo of super analytical and super creative and is a rock star in marketing and audience engagement. So this is going to be a fun ride. Well, welcome, Wanda. I'm excited to find out what catchwords is. I am certainly not a nerdy girl entrepreneur. I am definitely a serial entrepreneur, but boy, nerdy does not describe me at all. I have no technology skills at at all. So let's find out. Um, You know, your mission is to help entrepreneurs realize the power of being more visible. So I know how important that is because I'm all about, you know, uh, media, marketing, and all of that. But why do you think it's so important? Oh, boy. Well, I, I do want to comment that we we have a, a great overlap um, in common in the sense that I I come from a theater background. And so I am that, that crazy mix of super creative theater, love the acting, love the singing, you know, the stage work and such. And then I just have this really... Uh, nerdy analytical side of me. And uh, for for quite a while, um, I just thought I was plagued with something really weird um, because, because there weren't a lot of people that, that had strengths in, in, in both areas, but I'm, I'm learning over time, um, you know, to, to wield it, but, but visibility is really important in the sense um, I, I guess I can kind of reflect back from my theater experience as to what, visibility means in actually impacting and moving an audience, right? And I think you you can really appreciate that. The way somebody perceives um, their visibility as a, a stage actor, being an actor in a musical, et cetera, right? It's really important to to understand the perspective of the audience and to really be considerate of what you want the audience to feel and experience um, as a result of that acting, right? And um, I find that there's a big difference between actors that are either really self-reflective, right? Where, where being on stage is really about them versus the actors where being on stage is about the audience. And the same applies in, in business. And um, in business, it's so critical for us to choose visibility because that's the fastest way that our ideal prospects can actually get to know, like, and trust us, right? They get to hear our voices. They get to listen to our stories. They get to see us if, it, if we're speaking in front of a, of a, of a live audience or if we're doing a, a, a digital interview that in, includes video, right? And that really speeds up the no like um, and trust factor. And then that's where, where people buy. So I find that I kind of, um, I mix my experience as a performer and what I thought was important and why people felt that they were moved by my performances. I felt were because I actually really thought about my audience. And then I bring that over to my entrepreneur customers and clients and um, and teach them about how important it is to really understand the person that's listening to them and how that could really affect whether the person's affected by their, their message and moved by their message. So how much visibility is too much visibility, uh, Wanda? I mean, 
I don't think you can be too visible, frankly. I mean, I think somebody should be out there every single day. But what is your conclusion in terms of talks or interviews? How much do you think people should do? I mean, I really do accept, uh, I believe you should be out there every single day doing this. But give us your, your uh, yeah. you know. So it, it's interesting because I, I do agree when you when you finally realize that you are your company's greatest asset, right, that it's so important for people to understand who you are, what your story is, and that is going to be the clincher, you know, especially when um, you have a lot of competitors out in the marketplace and um, somebody has many, many choices. And then obviously the person that they saw that they liked, that that's that's where they're going to go. Right. So I agree with you that that it would be optimal for us to really just focus on being the face of our business. But the reality is, is that there's the whole operations of our business. Right. And so you want to make sure that, you know, you you show up, you bring in the leads and then you actually can do something with those leads and then you can actually deliver effectively. Right. So what I have found over time is as much as my desire is to encourage a large amount of visibility, I've found that there's a lot of uh, clunking out on the back end, right? If somebody focuses too much on the front end, then what happens is they may be inundated with leads and then they actually don't have the time or the process to figure out how to convert those leads into an actual client. And then when they become clients, if they don't actually spend enough time to understand what should be that machine on the back end to ensure that the clients get a really, really wonderful experience, um, then that could be a problem too. So, so when you think of optimal, optimal is really dependent on how well prepared you are to accept the flow of clients. And so in the beginning, um, I don't think that somebody should hide behind their computers and then just work out the operations in the back end and never show up on the front end. Right. <laughs> um, right. I have, I have actually done that where I've been so, um, so focused on the technical build of my platform, for example, or this, the systems and the operations and, and building the SOPs, you know, for, and the training for my, my employees that all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't shown my face in front of potential clients in months, right? So um, so I don't recommend that, but I think that if people actually commit to a visibility plan, then maybe commit to at first twice a month, you know, have one speaking engagement and one media engagement a, a month, then start amping it up, right? With the goal to increase it as much as possible, but to also feel that you're not going to, you know, the wheels aren't going to fall off of the, <laughs> of the truck if you if you start showing up all the time does that make sense absolutely so but what are people doing right and what are people doing wrong mm. um so right now is well let, let's go back in to me in in all of time especially in the the past 10 years i think um what i had realized over time is that when we spent time or money um, to prepare for live presentations, especially when you're educating people, that we didn't really look at how were we going to optimize that experience, right? As experts and the people that I, I support are typically really service-minded and impact-driven experts. So what happens is they tend to give, 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 right? From an educational perspective, but they don't really think about the strategy. Like what is the business purpose of them being in front of an audience? And so if they don't have that strategy, then they wind up having this, this experience where they really invigorate the audience with great information. And then they, they walk out like a one night stand, right? It was like, they, they walk out with no second dates, right? <laughs> it was like this lovely experience and everybody says, oh my gosh, you were wonderful, et cetera. And then you walk home and you have hardly any leads, right? And so what happens is I have found that a lot of people, this is a reason why they're not choosing visibility because they can't clearly see the ROI. They get that hunch that, okay, well, showing up is going to do something for my business, but there's no way for them to actually measure it. So I think the biggest um, issue that we have had over time is, one, 
not strategically thinking about your messaging um, when you are becoming visible and to ensure that it, there's always some sort of link to, to your business, right? You, you can be service minded and service hearted and still serve your audience really, really well, but ensure that it circles back to uh, clearly giving them a way to connect with you, right? So that's the one thing. And then in the past couple of years, because of the technology that I created, the second thing is really having a strong call to action to make sure that you capture those interested people. I like to call them those anonymous fans, right? You you try and connect with them as quickly as possible because um, – there's a pesky behavioral law, Gail, uh, called the law of diminishing intent. All right. That's super nerdy, but it basically means that the longer we wait to do something, the lower the probability it is that we're going to do it. It's life, right? We really say, wow, that was cool. I totally have to look up that person and then life happens and we don't do it because we waited too long to do it. So um, it's really important to provide a call to action that allows people to respond quickly. And that's why I developed catchwords.com. Well, I was just going to ask you, so tell us what catchwords, and that's K, K-E-T-C-H, catchwords, what does that mean? Yeah. And yeah, and how does that happen? And what do we do with it? Sure, sure. So, so traditionally, um, and I, I've been an entrepreneur for over 15 years. I've I've launched a lot of different products and services. And one of my core products long ago um, was a, a consulting. Uh, I call it a product, but it was a, I ran a consulting firm. But we had productized our our consulting services. But the point is that my major way of actually communicating to potential clients and, and corporate executives that could use my help was to speak at conferences. And, um, and I realized that I would speak in front of these folks. They would be really intrigued. They would take pictures of my slides and all of us who spoke in front of an audience, our standard call to action was either come up and speak to me, go to my exhibit booth, or here's my email address or my LinkedIn handle or Facebook or whatever. It was traditionally, you know, LinkedIn or email and, um, and then come and talk to me. And I noticed that in most cases, people didn't follow up. So I had actually invented um, this texting platform several years before, back in 2009. I was a little, little too early to the game, um, but that's what happens when you're super nerdy visionary. <laughs> you just, you just see solutions to things. And then like the market's like, uh, yeah, I don't get it yet. But, um, but basically I had created this technology that would allow people to text for electronic brochures. Okay. And I had called it eco files an eco friendly way to get files of information. Um, and it was, it was too early. I was trying to be eco-friendly. I was trying to reduce waste. I was trying to solve a lot of problems with us all, you know, picking up pieces of paper or brochures at a, an exhibit and um, and throwing it away. And ultimately, marketers spending way too much money and not having metrics around it. So it was kind of a dead technology, and I decided to use it to allow my audience to text for my slides. And 25% of my audience texted for my slides that first time in 2011. And I realized that I had been losing the opportunity to connect with these people this whole time. And that was 25% of 300 people that I spoke to. It was a huge number of, of, of leads for me. And, um, and that was what I realized I was doing is I was, I was catching, I was capturing those anonymous fans. Those were the people that had the glimmer in their eye. Those were the people that were taking like furious notes. They were, they were taking pictures of my slides, but I never knew who they were. And so what wound up being a technology that was intended for eco-friendly <laughs> purposes um, wound up being my opportunity to capture, connect, or catch, um, that was my play on, on words, K-E-T-C-H, those anonymous fans. And that's how Catchwords actually came about um, because I used it to grow my consulting business. And over time, 
I realized that with really good strategy, all that strategy I was talking about earlier, that I was ultimately able to have 76% of my audience consistently texting my catchword. Every time I spoke at a conference, I would spend time understanding who was in the audience, what would serve them best, and 76% of my audience would would text for my slides. And I grew that consulting business to $4.2 million as a of revenue as a result of that. <laughs> but but I realized I wanted to do this for other entrepreneurs. And so that's how Catchwords was born. So do you have a Catchword to share? <laughs> yeah, actually. So so what I um what I love to do is share with people at, at least some of this initial strategy, right? Whether you have a Catchword or not, I feel like you need to start with really thinking of every one of your engagements and appearances as, um, you know, as a, a strategic opportunity. And so I created this guide on how to transform every talk into a lead generating machine, right? And it's my way of kind of sharing with the audience, what are some of those strategies that you can start implementing today um, to really transform how you even approach appearances. And my catchword is leads. So I invite people to text leads, L-E-A-D-S, to 411321. So 411321 is the phone number. It's a short number. It's called a short code. But you text it to 411321. The message would be leads, L-E-A-D-S. And the system will ask you for your email address. And literally within seconds, you'll get a text confirming that you're going to receive it and an email and an attachment. And that attachment is our, our PDF guide on how to transform your talk into a lead generating machine. Um, do you have folks that listen to you internationally? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Countries. All right. So then if you are listening to this outside of the United States, you can also receive it by texting to the phone number plus one nine Oh nine seven, four, one, one, three, two, one. That's the phone number. And then the message, once again, is leads, L-E-A-D-S. And you follow the same process, provide your email address, and then you will get um, you will get the guide. And so, you know, in all transparency, that is my that's my opportunity, one, to serve the audience. So if anybody out there resonates with this, right, if you speak in front of audiences, if you do podcast interviews, radio interviews, TV interviews, and at this point, you just direct them to a website or a LinkedIn page and you hope that they connect, right? This is your way of transforming that and actually being of service, of additional service to your audience, right? In my case, I'm 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 telling my story, but I want them to understand the type of strategy that we that we provide. So I'm offering as a service this guide. And then that allows the audience to get to know me better and, and get to kind of sit with that information a little bit better. And it offers me the opportunity to reconnect with them and help them um, get to understand how I can support them. Right. So um, so the so, U.S. one is for what is the U.S. one again? Sure, you text to four one one three two one, and you three, text two, one, the okay. word L E A D S four one one three two one. Text the word L E A D S and international is plus one nine zero nine seven four one one three two one, and also the word leads L E A D S. So leads is my catchword, right? So my goal ultimately is for a catchword to be like the next gold standard call to action, right? For people to naturally say, so do you have a catchword or what is your catchword, right? Um, I I believe that that it should be because it is of greater service to an audience than just sending them to a website or to follow you on Instagram or whatever. And um, and then it's a greater opportunity for you to really be able to, to connect with them more effectively. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, um, so <laughs> I know this is a silly question to ask someone like you, but do you have a new invention on the horizon? <laughs> well, what's interesting is, uh, uh, gosh, as a, I, I have been called the visionary. So I'm not walking around saying, oh, I'm a visionary. Well, actually, now I am. I've been taught, you know, I think women especially kind of have, have difficulty um, just 
communicating, <laughs> I guess, pride in, in certain things. But um, I, I've been working with some wonderful people who said, Wanda, you know, what you thought was a plague um, actually is something called being a visionary. So as being a visionary, I'm constantly inventing things and I just have to pick which one um, it is next. But what I will say is I, I tried to stay focused on supporting visibility. And so what I did was I launched a, a new community called Rocket Fuel. And uh, Rocket call is spelled R-O-C-K-I-T because I love rock and roll. Um, but Rocket Fuel is a community on Facebook that um, really unites entrepreneurs who are, are just rock stars in their business. They love to support other entrepreneurs as well. And they recognize that visibility is rocket fuel, right? And as a result, I'm creating a rocket fuel VIP program that basically takes the technology catchwords and it wraps it with all of the support that you need to actually be visible consistently. Um, I had realized that there are some of our clients that have catchwords and they're still hiding in my view, right? Like you, like you said, like you should be showing up all the time. And, um, and there's something there, right? There's something that's preventing them from showing up more. And so in my rocket fuel VIP program, our focus is to give you the technology, the catchword, right? To make sure that all of those appearances are, are measurable, but to wrap it with support to ensure that you're much more visible, um, that you, than you currently are. And, uh, well, and, and we're your, coming, your audience we're coming to, to the bottom of the show, you know, Wanda, oh. so I want to make sure everybody knows how to get in touch with you. Um, yeah. First of all, we appreciate your gift. I mean, the fact of people who text you at 411321 uh, with leads as the, as the, as the uh, uh, word, you know, to get your guide is going to be invaluable. Mm. So how can people reach you if they want to reach you, you know, specifically to talk to you about maybe hiring you? Yeah, yeah. So I would I would recommend, well, first of all, if you do text leads, then there's all my contact information there. And you could actually book a call directly with me. When you text leads, you actually have a link within um within that email to get right on my calendar. So that's that's one thing. That's an incentive. But then you can also always find me on Facebook. I'm open to direct messaging. That's Wanda. Toro, T-O-R-O, Torini, T-U-R-I-N-I, and um, I'd be happy to speak with you. But get on my calendar. Text leads to 411321, and then, then I could see you next week. <laughs> ah, that sounds wonderful. Well, you know, um, I think that you bring such enthusiasm to what you do. You bring so much joy to what you do and to combine it with being a nerdy entrepreneur <laughs> is very unique and I think is wonderful. And the fact that you could be able, to, you've been able to combine that with your, you know, theatrical background, all of that is an advantage to anyone wanting to work with you because I think you understand both sides of the coin, mm -hmm. which is not an easy thing to do. I mean, usually technology people are very focused on, this is what you do and this is how you do it and this is why you do it. And yeah. then, of course, the creative people are, well, let's just all get together and make this work. So you have combined both of these together, which I think is amazing. Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I just am really, really pleased that uh, we've been able to have you uh, doing this because this is a, a part of everything. Now we've got about two minutes left, Wanda. Are there, uh, is there anything that we have not talked about that you need to to tell our people? No, I, really, the most important thing is that the results are important, right? The it, because the results, and especially for my clients who are impact driven and service minded, right? There's heart to what we do. And so it's very, very important for me to help them wield the power of the technology to help extend that impact, right? And I think that that's what you mentioned as a differentiator is 
is very important to me because I have had folks say, hey, well, why don't you just create the platform and allow people to go on and, you know, just create their own catchword, et cetera, right? Um, I could do that and collect a lot of money from people that never, ever actually use the technology or use it directly correctly, right? And that's not what my goal is. My goal is to be able to help other people reach that $4.2 million like I did, right? And not only was it revenue for my business, it was a change in lifestyle. It was personally money that I was able to use for my fertility journey. I mean, I'm a 49 year old with a 10 month old baby. And that took a lot of- Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. And that took a lot of medical investment, right? So so the the money that you earn is it can change your life and it's also an indicative of of what of the, all the other lives that you're changing, the impact that you're making, right? So that is my mission. Let's use the technology, let's use let's wrap that with really really great strategy so that you can actually get the Best, best impact every single time you show up. And that's my mission. And I just really, really hope I get the opportunity to help anybody that has that little flutter in their heart right now of excitement. Um, I really look forward to, to supporting your mission. Thank you so much. And thank you for being with us, Wanda. Folks, take advantage of what she's had to offer. And thanks for being with us today, Wanda. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks for listening to Women in Business. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you have any suggestions as to who you'd like me to have as a guest, just email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. Be sure to check out www.sob6tips.com. And in the meantime, go to www.spunkyoldbroad.com to see the resources I have for you.